Alright guys, we're back on with this Triumph T140 750 Bonneville engine and tonight I'm going to be chucking a clutch in there but not in the normal repair way we're going to be putting the old clutch back in because shortly down the line after the running period we're going to be changing it out probably to a belt drive or renewing all the stock stuff this one's pretty worn out so I'll show you the damage so you know what to look for in the meantime I've already fitted the new drive sprocket as I mentioned I would do in the last video um, I've fitted this trap door with the oil seal in the correct way most people fit this seal back to front I don't know if you can see that there but it looks like it's fitted in backwards as what you would normally expect to see the flat edge points towards the sprocket the edge with the spring retainer is facing out towards the clutch chain wheel we've already fitted the keyway in there again i've reused the old one but it's a good tight fit if it was any other job you'd replace that just a matter of course uh i've, I've fitted a new gasket on there uh got that from ebay from british bike doctor um, as you know the rest of the motor has all been uh, rebuilt if this was a t120 you'd see an oil seal in here uh, again fitted with the flat face fitting towards the main bearing uh, this is a t140 so the the motor breathes through this bearing and those three little holes there they they allow the primary side to to balance out and get its oil it gets its oil feed that way uh push rod push rods already in there again reuse that nothing wrong with it sometimes they're a bit melted on the end because nobody seems to know how to uh set up clutch adjustments i'll cover that in another uh, another video if uh if anyone wants to know how to do that um again if anyone's got any questions just ask away uh, while i'm doing this i don't mind making a video to show somebody else how to do it for now we've got the old clutch and the front primary sprocket set up like this you've got to put them together with the chain looped around there to get it in there because if you put one on not the other you cannot get the chain on i fitted 20 new rollers in there although they probably won't be staying they're so inexpensive it's not worth not doing that for this this is only going to be in for the running in period because it's pretty knackered like a lot of things we found with this engine there is a lot of dipshittery gone on here um it was meant to have been rebuilt but it seems they just, they just took it apart and then covered it in that horrible shitty orange hylamar if you ever see that stuff when you're going to go buy a bike walk away it's fucked it's knackered you know you see that orange shit hanging out and you, you know the billy from the pub has had a go on it um it it it's just been apart and they all put together probably wrong this one no exception you see these these grooves in here where the uh, clutch split lands see those little like jagged shark teeth on there that that means that's passed its best to me now but for our purposes running this motor in and gonna be spending some money in a few weeks it'll it'll do for now it'll 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 just save our purposes for now so as i say that's all uh that's all been laid out with some new bearings and a new thrust washer if you're putting a new thrust washer in the fuzzy bronze side faces the chain wheel uh, i won't bother dismantling that because it, it it's boring you don't need to see you don't need to see that but the fuzzy bronze face faces up uh we've got a new oil seal in there again a bit of dipshittery gone on here the uh 73812 screws that normally in here the all there uh, cross head ones they 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 were there there was some I don't even know what they were. 
Allen screws jammed in there. I've tapped them out to 5mm and replaced them with some metric Allen screws. That'll just make it easier for the next fella that comes to work on this. Probably be me. But if not, it'll be my mate Carl who, uh, who, who owns this engine and is going in his chopper. Uh, that'll just future-proof it for him a little bit. You know, he will have to get on with the uh, with the metric Allen keys, but I'm sure that'll be no drama. It's better than the shite that was in there before. So, anyway, see that laid out there. I'll uh, I'll just set this uh, camera to one side and I'll I'll try and lift it all up in uh, one go and see if uh, see if it all goes in in one go. So keyways keyways already in the main shaft. Just gonna pick it up by this lot, all in one go, and try and get the chain over that tensioner blade and get get that all home in one go. Uh, that's that's in there now. We have the same problem with the with the clutch center. As in, there's loads of little shark bites out of there where the uh, where the clutch plates have been banging round. Yeah, and previous previous guys should have probably replaced this, but just decided to ignore that. Yeah, we're going to ignore it. You know, uh, but I know what's in there. I know it won't cause a major problem, but I wouldn't want to go long distance. This is purely for running in purposes. Put that in there and. That's going to hold them roller bearings in. And we've got the old uh, flat washer on there. Send that home. And you replace this nut every time. Don't bother skimping on that, it's not worth it falling off. So I'll just uh, go away and get my torque wrench, and I'll be back in a second. And I've got a clutch lock and plate and a little alley wedge to wedge up that front sprocket and I'll show you how we do that. Back in a sec. Right, back again. I've just got my torque wrench there and uh, sat that up and in my haste, probably through uh, making the video as well as working on the motorbike, I forgot before you put the uh, clutch sensor in there should get the clutch spring bolts and fit fit them prior to putting the clutch on as if you get to the point where i was about to get to and tighten the nut up you'll just be taking it off again and knackering up a perfectly good brand new clutch nut so it was a good job i sat back a second and spotted that I'd made that schoolboy error. Once they're in there, they land on the uh, the back the back plate of the uh, clutch shock absorber. Again, this is this is a second hand shock absorber. And you see, it's knackered. I haven't even took the rubbers out and replaced them. It's not staying in there long enough that it's going to be an issue for us. This is just purely about the order of assembly to help somebody out down the road and right, so back to where it was before bolts are now in washer in clutch sensor nut on and while I was away then I preset the uh, the torque wrench to I think 70 foot pound that's what the uh, what the Triumph manual specs this to be at. Now, you have to lock these guys up because you turn that nut and the whole clutch centre turns. Uh, so again, I've got, I've got a lock and plate from, uh, from British Bike Dogs on eBay. It's not a proper clutch plate. 
let's just get this guy in there. That locks up the, uh, the, the chain wheel and the clutch centre. And then I've got this uh, bit of aluminium. It's a mistake I made on the lathe some time ago. Get that guy, and we'll stick that guy in there. That locks up the that locks up the crank. So after that, none of this can turn. And we should be able to. If I was thinking ahead again, I, I, I probably should have put that uh, seven eight socket on a uh, on a ratchet to speed this job up. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pause it for the sake of that. Some guys are still located. Okay, so we're finished with that guy. Clutch, clutch is on, clutch is tight. I'll uh, I'll pause it again for a second. I'll fish that uh, holding plate out. Get rid of this little fella. And. Be back in a sec with the next bit. Okay, so with that chalked up, I've got the clutch plates ready now. These are going back in in the same order that they came out. Again, they're not the best, uh, but they'll serve our purposes. As you can see there, this is definitely the the first plate because you can see the witness marks there of the holes in the back of the chain wheel on that friction plate so I'm just going to put these back in in the same order they came out and you'll notice that the slop from the tangs on these plates where, where they've been chattering about for however long they've been in there that's that's something you want to replace again for the for the purposes of this video comment if you like <laughs> uh, this is this is going in there for now but it, it, it none of it's staying none of it's staying the uh, the plane plates they've all got scores on uh, if it wasn't for the fact I knew where this motor's going and um, it's going to come back to me for the retrofit of the other primary this this lot wouldn't be getting replaced this is purely to show the order of assembly if anyone wants to see the uh, the next primary drive then fire us a message i'm sure uh, i'm sure our car won't mind us uh, Doing a video on that later in the day. I'm going to give him the motor back, let him, let him fit it, and uh, it'll come to me for the yeah, uh, for the start up, and no doubt I'll be with him when he's uh, when he's running in. This last one is, as you can see, the score is particularly bad. Not a drama for this, so it's all been cleaned up. Um, we'll we'll just do a few hundred miles on it. Got the pressure plate here. One the uh, one the adjuster. All the way all, all the way out. And then you get these little guys, these uh, clutch spring cups. Uh, we'll 
just uh, pop them in the uh, pop them in the pressure plate with the tang locating into its little notch. Guys, into position. We got our springs. Put those guys in there. Well, these aren't the new clutch nuts, but they're the old ones again. If you were doing this job as a, as a recon, you'd replace everything. In my experience, working on the front line with these triumph clutches, you can't like uh, just replace a couple of bits and the bearings and stuff it, it tends to be a knock-on effect it, it, it tends to be like everything's a little bit knackered and you need to do a lot you can buy full clutch assemblies straight from Harris and, uh, and that solves all your problems in one go or you can Go the methods I've gone many many times, and do the do the old Johnny Cash one piece at a time. Feels cheaper that way. You always you, you always end up replacing absolutely everything. I'll go away and find my clutch key and uh, we'll wind those guys down. Okay, right, I've got my clutch key here. Uh, these things are available on eBay again. Got this one from British Bike Doctor, the part number is P180. And just find them all in there and see the thread is about flush with with the end of the nut. Don't worry about uh, getting the pressure plate running through later on when we've got a kick start on it wind the thing over with, with the clutch pulled in just so you get a good positive release and engagement when, when the bike's in the real world running in the wild These nuts have got a little uh, locating dimple press mark in there to stop them unwinding once, uh, once you've got them all tightened up. If you don't want to buy one of these tools, you can get a, uh, you know, your favourite black spare or Harbour Freight or Halfords screwdriver get, get the biggest most stabby bastard you can and uh, you know grind a lump out the middle of it and for, for that little relief there right, 
the proper the proper tools nice to use. So all those bolt heads are flush with the uh, with the clutch nuts now. And that takes us to the, this little fella in the middle here. Uh, uh, I always have that guy wound all the way out. Nut box right off. And then just send them in until until you feel them hit that push rod. Uh, which is just there and this is part of setting the clutch up I'm not trying to do it on the other side on the mechanism I'm not trying to do it on the cable which is only meant for an adjustment on the fly just get that guy tight and then just Take take him out to half a turn. Three quarters seems reasonable on this. Then lock it up. That is the start of setting up the clutch for when it's on the bike. That's good. Right, so that's all that in there from from here on in the rest of this side is going to be fitting the three alternator studs the old spacer in there we'll turn the crank round so that's somewhere in here getting this little uh, square peg in for the rotor I want to send that get back. And then you set the uh, fit in your uh, alternator and uh, rotor on this one. The rotor we pulled off was uh, was a real old one. It wasn't looking in the best condition, um, and they make me nervous because of the old the old ones that weren't welded together. They uh, the magnets were flying out and smashing the uh, the alternators a bit so as this is my mate's motor um, 
and it's going to be a keeper. I've actually invested in a uh, a brand new Lucas rotor for him. Uh, date on this one's uh, 9th, two thousand twelve. So we we know it, we know it's a modern one. The one we took off. If we pull it out the panel, it definitely is an old seventies one. Has got eight. 871 stamped on it so it is the original thing it would be devastating to do all this work on the motor and then have the old horse alternator fly to bits in two years time and kill it so we'll future proof it and we'll we'll be putting the, we'll be putting a new unit on there if anyone wants to to see a video of that and fitness data and gapping it. It's it, it's not scientific. Uh, basically, <laughs> you put your stator on after you fitted your rotor and run a field gauge round. Rotate your motor a couple of times and keep keep looking for about eight eight thou clearance around there, making sure that the the magnets aren't kissing the uh, the stator. If they are, it's just a case of bending the studs. Little tiny bit of manipulation. There's no other adjustment. It sounds brutal, but that's the way it is. Chances are we'll put it on and it'll all be good. We know the crank straight. We spun we spun the crank when we took it apart. So we should be good to go on this. Uh, I think at this point I'll wrap this little video up. Um, if anyone's interested in seeing anything else, throw us a comment, throw us a message, and I'll put it up there. The next thing I'll be doing is, although it looks like that cylinder head's fitted, it's actually not. Um, I was waiting on a couple of bits, and I had to do a few repairs on the head. So that's on there now just to keep the top of the motor clean. What we're working on, but it is just placed there. Uh, we've done a bit of machining on this exhaust port. It's meant to be a pushing port head, but this one's been converted to stubs, but it was done badly, so we remade our own stubs and machined them and sweated them in there. Sweated them and the same time hammered them in there very very br brutal job but it'll be better than what was there before and these heads are in short supply so we had to do a bit of a rescue on this one the, the valves and guides have all been replaced so I say ne next job is going to be uh, putting the cylinder head on doing a final fit on that Fitting the uh, fitting the rocker boxes, and and setting the tappets, and then our Carl can have his engine back. No doubt he's watching this because I say he subscribes to this. Uh, he hasn't seen this motor in about six months, so maybe this week I'll be uh, getting it back to him. Let me know what you think. Any uh, any comments, criticisms, questions, more than welcome. Um, if you want to know about any parts, part numbers, just fire us a message, it's all good. Cheers guys, thank you very much for watching, appreciate it, hope it helps you out.